We have a small table containing 25 products and its sales value. We need to define a threshold, let's say 10,000, and we need to filter out this table based on this threshold and to see all the sales above the 10,000. Not only this, at end of the table, we need one item called other, contains the summation of the rest of the items below the 10,000. On the right hand side, we have a column chart drawing the filtered out list and the other element that we added at the bottom of the list. When we change the threshold, let's say to 12,000, the list is getting shortened, the total of the other change and also the chart reflects the changes that we have in the filtered out list. Let's change again to 15,000, all dynamic and all changing instantly. Hello and welcome to a new video. We are back to the new dynamic array functions. In this video, we are going to look at amazing use of VStack function. For you to know, the VStack function until the recording of this video in July 2022, still in the beta version, and we hope it will be available for the rest of the users very soon. In this video, we are going to look at how to extract lines above a threshold and sum the rest of the lines in one row. We are going to use multiple functions, some of them dynamic array functions and some of them is normal functions. We are going to use filter function, sort function and let function. All of these functions are available for all 65 users. Only choose columns and VStack available only in the beta version. This video is divided into four sections. First one is how to build the labels column. So we're going to build the filter table into two steps. First one, to build the labels column, and then we're going to build the values column. Then we're going to apply conditional formatting on the table. And finally, we're going to draw a dynamic chart to reflect the changes that could happen to our filtered list. Let's go back to Excel and see how we can do this together. We have a table containing the products, 25 products and its sales value for each and every product. We already put this in a table format and we gave it a name. If you check the table design on the left hand side, sales by product is the name of this table. On the middle we have here the threshold. We start with 2500 and we already set up the header for the new filtered list. Let's start by trying to get the labels list, I'm going to start with only label list in the first step and I'm going to use multiple function to make sure that I get it dynamic. You can easily expect that I'm going to start with the filter function. So I'm going to write equal and then filter function FIL. My first choice is filter. I'm going to press tab. What I'm going to filter, the array that I want to filter is the first request. I want to filter the labels only. However, because I'm going to use also the values for filtering the labels, I'm going to select the entire table. To select the table, I'm going to hover over the top corner of the, of the table by the mouse. I can see this tilted black arrow. When I click on it, it will select the entire table. If you check the formula bar, you will see that sales by product, the name of the table. So here is the first request, which is the array. Then comma, the second request will be include. Include is nothing but the criteria that I'm going to use to filter this table. So the criteria will be based on the sales value. So I'm going to select the sales value column. I'm going again to hover over the label of the column. I can see this small little down arrow. I'm going to click on it. It will choose the entire column. And if you check the formula bar, sales by product and between two square brackets, sales value, which is basically the label of the column. Then I'm going to use the greater than and I'm going to use the cell containing my threshold, which is basically G4. And I'm going to close the bracket for the filter function and hit enter. And here you go. You have the entire table filtered. If you check any of these value, all of them above the 2500 threshold. Now I need to get all of this sorted and sorted also based on the column of the value. So I'm going to go back. And before the filter function, I'm going to use the sort function, S-O-R-T. My first choice is sort. Then the array, 
the array is basically the entire output coming from the filter function and then sort index meaning that which column you need to use in order to sort in this case i need the second column i have only two columns here first one is the labels but i want to sort based on the value so the sort index in this case is going to be two and then comma the sort order it can be ascending or descending in my case I need it to be descending so I'm going to select minus one and then close the bracket for sort function and hit enter and here you go you have the list sorted as you can see starting with handlebars ending with tights and the order is very correct now I need only the first column which is basically the labels only so I'm going to use another function called choose columns and we already used the choose columns in another video i'm going to put now the link on top of the screen and also afterwards i'm going to see a link for the filter function more explanation for filter function also you can see the link now on top of the screen if you want to refer back to it let's go to the formula bar before the sort function i'm going to type choose columns cho my second choice choose columns and then tab first choice is array array is the output of the sort function and then which column you want to choose i can put the column index column one column two and i can choose also multiple columns in my case i need only one column which is basically the first column so i'm going to write one and then close and hit enter and here you go you have the list of the items so the very last step in order to have this labels column ready is to add the word other at end of this list whenever i change the filter i need all the time the other item to be the very last item of the filtered list so in order to do so i'm going to use the new function which is basically the vstack function and vstack is nothing but stacking two arrays on top of each other in a vertical direction so i'm going to go back again before the choose column function i'm going to use the vstack function vst my first choice is vstack the array required will be basically the output of the choose column function and then this is my first array the second array will be only the word other it's only one item array so i'm going to put this item between double quotes because it is a text so it has to be between double quotes and then close the bracket for vstack and then hit enter and here you go you have your list at end of the list you have the word other and this is just the preparation for the labels in order to bring also the sales value inside this table let's try to change the threshold i'm going to use something like 15,000 and hit enter and here you go the list now is only five items and next to the last the very last item you have the word other let's go back to 2500 i think it's working perfectly let's go directly to the next step which is basically preparing the values column before just jumping into the step two of building the values column i want to have a quick review over the let function actually uh, suppose that you have three variables like here i have variable a b and c and i have three values assigned to each and every variable and i want to sum all of these values together i can just go and type sum and it's a job done and it's very easy but suppose that i need to use the variable name instead of the value itself in the calculation so i can use let to help me doing this so let's try together i'm going to write equals and then let and then i'm going to follow the screen tip the first requirement is a name so i can just assign a variable name which is basically in our case a and then comma i need to assign a value to this variable in my case i can type 10 which is acceptable or i can just put a reference to this 10 which is e4 the next requirement will be a calculation or name two so the minimum arguments for the let function is three arguments name one name value one and then calculation i can just put only a i can put just a so i i named a variable i give or assigned a value to this variable and i'm just demonstrating this value like 10 as you can see here or if you just edit back i can just take out this a i can put another name i can have name two so it's calculation or name two in my case name two will be b then comma and i can assign the 25 again comma 
I can here put a calculation or name three. In my case, I need the third variable, which will be the C and then comma, and I'm going to assign the 30. And finally, I can do another comma. I can put name four and five, but in my case, I just need three variables. So the seventh step here will be the calculation. So the calculation can be, let's say, the sum of the three together. So I'm going to write the sum function, and then I'm going to put the name A, the variable A. And you can notice that it appears in your list of choices, meaning that it is understandable by Excel. You can see that it starts with uh, the icon X, a small X inside this circle, meaning that it is a variable known by let function. Then comma B, the same, it's very known for the let function. And finally the C, and I can close the bracket for sum and hit enter. And here you go, you find the same result as you can see. One thing I need you to notice here, if you assign a variable inside let function like a, b, or c, like what we did here, you cannot use it inside another let function. So if you try to recall the variable a inside another let function, it's not allowed. You need to set another variable a and b and c and start to put the calculation. So the calculation, the variables for the let function is very local for the same function itself. Why should I do so? I can just simply do the summation like what I did uh, previously. Why? I should use something like let. Actually, the, the very practical use of, of let is when you have to repeat a very complicated calculation more and more inside the same formula. Meaning that I can, instead of assigning values to these variables, I can just assign a calculation or a formula or a function. And then because I give it a name, I can recall this name later inside the let function and use it in another calculation or in the final calculation. In this case, let's have a quick example using the same variable. So instead of assigning, I'm just going to delete everything after the very first argument, which is the name A or variable A. And I'm going to assign a calculation to this variable, like summation of the three numbers together, then close the bracket for sum, and then comma. Now I have name one, which is basically the A, and name one value, which is basically the summation of the three numbers together and then comma b in this case it will be the count of the three numbers together again which is basically the output will be three close the bracket for count and then comma now we have name one name one value which is the sum name two b and the name two value which is basically the count and now i need to calculate the average it will be basically the division of the sum over the count so i can just divide a over b and then hit enter and here you go you have the average so i assigned a calculation to a variable assigned two calculations to two variables and then i used the variables itself to get the final output as you can see inside this let function by the way the very last argument in this case it is the fifth argument it is the final calculation or the final output of the function you can use the variables that you already assigned or you can just ignore them so i can just put something like other as we did in the previous example so i can just put other and this is the output regardless of all the functions and all the variables i already uh, defined previously or i can just use one of the variables so i can just put a it will give me only the 65 or i can just put the b which is count it will give me only three or i can use both of the variables inside the final calculation it's up to you uh, completely so again the very useful use of let is basically when you need to repeat a complicated calculation over and over inside the same formula you can just use let assign variable names and then use these names in the final output or in the next calculation as required in your formula Let's go back to our example. I need now to work on the values column. So in this case, I need again to filter the same table, the sales by product table using the filter function, but I'm going to put it inside a let function. And let's start together by writing equals and then let the name I want to assign. Let's choose a name like top, which means anything above the threshold. And then I'm going to assign a function, which is or a calculation, which is basically a function to this name one so i'm going to use the filter function again the filter function 
array this time I'm going to use only the sales value column and then comma and then going to the second argument for the filter function which will be the include include is basically the criteria I'm going to use the same column sales value and the criteria will be anything above the threshold as we did last time and then close the filter function and then comma the last argument at this stage for the red function will be just demonstrating the output of the top top is nothing but the name of the variable that I assign to the filter function so I'm going to write only top and you can see it's known by Excel so far so I can just close the let function and hit enter and here you go you have the list of the values above the threshold demonstrated here however you need to remember that we did a sort for this list so in order to maintain the right relation between these two lists I need to just make sure that I sorted the output of this filtration so I can go before the filter function and I can use the sort function for the sort function the array will be basically the output of the filter function and at the end I can just carefully do another comma and follow the screen tip I need the sort index in this case it's only one column so there's no need to put a sort index I can just skip it and put another comma and then the sort order it will be descending for sure so I'm going to use minus one and close the bracket for the sort function and hit enter now it is sorted descending and it is in good relation with the first list of the values now I have this variable called top I assigned a calculation to this variable which is basically the filter and sort function together to get the list of values above the threshold that I have for the moment the next step is to calculate the other the other element and this basically will be the difference between the sum of the table itself the original table the sales value column the original table and whatever I have inside this list of items in order to do so I'm going back to my let function I'm going to delete the very last step or very last argument and I'm going to assign another value and I'm going to call it other because this other will be the value of the other item so I'm going to call it other and then comma and let's start to calculate it's a very basic calculation I'm going to sum the column uh, of sales value and then close the bracket for the sum function then subtract operator the minus sign and then another sum this time I'm going to sum this list which is basically represented by the variable top so I'm going to sum the top the top variable and then close the bracket for the sum and then another comma and here the let function needs another variable or a calculation so I'm going to use the other variable and hit enter and here you go here is the difference between the two lists which is basically 16 9 6 0 I think it's going well so far so the very last step is to put both arrays on top of each other like what we did in the previous step which is basically using the vstack function so I'm going to delete the last argument which is just demonstrating the output of the other and I'm going to just do a calculation using a vstack so I'm going to use the vstack function the first array will be basically the top the variable top containing the list of, va of values above the threshold and then comma the second array will be other which is basically the summation of the rest of the values below the threshold and then I'm going to close the bracket for the vstack and then hit enter and here you go you have your list completed you have all the values above the threshold and then summation of the rest in line with the other element that we have in the labels column let me try to do a very quick checkpoint so I'm going to sum this list no problem at all and then minus and sum the other column the original column close the bracket and enter and here you go it's zero so our work is going very very good let's try to change the threshold I'm going to use the 15,000 this time the list is getting shorter and you can see the position of other changed and the calculation inside other also changed and our checkpoint still at the zero so so far so good let's see how we can move forward to complete our example
now we need some uh, quick formatting for this table i need to just add some borders and because this a dynamic array or a dynamic list it's changing with uh, the selection of the threshold or even if you add some products to the list so i need uh, a conditional formatting instead of the normal cell formatting so i'm going to select the table and i'm going to go little bit down so i can cover the entire table in case of the number of rows increased with my selection so i'm going to use uh, the conditional formatting from the home ribbon conditional formatting i'm going to use a new rule i'm going to select the second choice format only cells that contains from the first drop down menu format cells with i can just go with no blanks and i can just go to the format directly the format box directly borders let's use the dotted borders outline and inside and then click on ok okay one more time and here you go let's try to change the threshold to 2500 and enter here you go the conditional formatting will help you if the length of the table is changing like in the case of the dynamic array the last part is to draw a chart and this chart need to be dynamic let's see how we can do this together i'm going to select the entire table and then going to the insert ribbon and from the chart area i'm going to select the ordinary clustered column chart quick formatting let me get rid of the labels on the axis and also i'm going to delete the grid lines i'm going to add labels on top of the columns using the green plus i'm going to select data labels i think this is not bad at all as a start now let's try to change the threshold i'm going to select the 2500 or type the 2500 the original uh, threshold that you started with then enter and let's see what happened here you can see that the table is now much longer and if you check the chart it's not capturing the entire table it's just capturing about half of the table so we are going to focus on how to make this chart dynamic enough to capture the entire table even if the length of the table is changing with the change of the threshold let's check the chart itself and how it works i'm going to chart design to select data and let's see what happened here if you check i have two sections one for the legend and this legend is working on the values itself so here i can see the series of the values you can check here here is the series name from edit series you have the series name it is pointing to g7 which is basically the label and the label called sales and down here you see the series value itself so you can see here the list of the values so it's from 19 up to uh, 13700 and here i want to put something that is dynamic and it can be changed with the change of the threshold the only way to do this is to assign a named range i can assign a dynamic range to a specific name in order to do so i'm going to give a name for this list remember that at the beginning we put this table into two lists or two separate columns and here is the exact reason why we did so from the beginning we need two separate lists one we are going to use it inside the values and one we are going to use it inside the labels so i need to assign two names two named ranges and these ranges will be dynamic ranges in order to do so i'm going to select the top of the first list which is basically the labels and i'm going to the formula ribbon and from the define names section i'm going to select define name let me give it uh, something meaningful for us let's call it labels and here you go it's already selected sheet one and f8 that's fine but i need to put a hash at the end and this hash is telling excel that please use or point to the entire spilled array starting from this selected cell and then click on ok and i can go and define another name let me select again the start or the first row of the second list the values list and then define name let me call it this time value and then it's already selected g8 i'm going to add the hash and then click on ok and i'm good to go now let me go back to the chart chart design and then select data i'm going to start with the values on the left hand side the legend area edit no issue with the series name i need to change the reference to the series name i'm going to delete this reference carefully but i need to keep the sheet one and the explanation mark 
and then in order to reference the new named range I need to hit the key F3 and I have the list of all names that I have for this workbook I'm going to select values and click on OK and then on the right hand side the horizontal axis I can just edit and then again carefully delete the reference and make sure to keep the sheet 1 and exclamation mark and then F3 and I'm going to select labels click on OK OK one more time and here you go everything is working perfectly let me try to increase the threshold I'm going to select 15,000 and I think it's working perfectly and we are good to go that was all for today if you like this video please like it subscribe and leave me a comment you will find here some useful links please check them out and see you in next video and bye